all right so in this video i quickly want to solve this question named cycle from the great front end website so this video is not sponsored by great front end but i just find this website to be a good resource for solving front end or javascript related questions so yeah check out this website if you are interested in the same all right so without any further ado let's get started all right so here we have this problem statement which says implement a function that takes one or more values and returns a function that cycles through those values each time it is called so basically let's see the example to understand this better so here we have a function being called cycle which gets passed the argument hello and then whatever cycle returns is being stored in hello fn and then hello fn is being called later on so whenever hello fn is being called it always prints hello because the argument here is only one so each time we call hello and then we cycle through we again get back to hello so it's always going to print hello all right then over here you can see in the next example we have two arguments which is on and off so in this case you can see the first time on off fn is clicked we print hello the second time it's invoked we call off and the third time it's called it cycles through since there's no more arguments after off so it cycles through and it calls the first argument again which is on all right so that is what we have to implement for this question all right so here you can see we have our code editor so let's first remove this from here and they have also given us the cycle function already which receives any number of arguments that we pass into it all right so values here specifically is going to be an array but when we spread through it or when we spread the values from it each of the value in the values array is going to be passed as an individual parameter to the cycle function all right so just know that when we spread values like this the arguments are going to be passed individually here but values itself if we console log values over here then values is going to be an array all right so now how to solve this question now before jumping into how to completely solve this question let's take a moment to first see how the code is written in the example and build up one by one or step by step until we finally get what we want right the first thing is notice here that we are calling cycle and whatever cycle returns is being stored in on of fn and then on of fn is being invoked later on so if we are invoking on of fn later on isn't it pretty obvious that cycle returns a function right because cycle returns a function which is stored in on of fn that's why we are able to call this as a function again because on of fn includes a function returned by cycle so for the first step let's just simply write return nothing but a function all right so that's how you go step by step so the first step is done the cycle will return a function all right so now on of fn is equal to nothing but this function over here and then since we call on of fn later on and it prints the respective value of the argument so we pretty much know that this function here needs to return a value or basically a value from the values array over here all right so now or now at least let's just consider for the first function call so when on of fn is called first we need to return the first argument right which is on so all i can do over here for now is let's say i'll write return nothing but values of zero so this means when on of fn is called for the first time it's going to invoke this which is going to return values of zero that is going to be nothing but on all right so that works fine but the next time it's called it's again going to return values of zero which is on but that is not what we want we want to return off the next time it's called all right so to do that we of course need to dynamically update this zero over here all right and for that to happen we need to have some sort of check or we need to have some sort of variable which keeps a check of the current index that was last invoked or that was last utilized all right because based on that when on of fn is called again we can make sure that we go on and invoke the next argument all right so what i can do is i can create a variable over here so let current index and let's say i keep this zero for now all right now i can use this current index over here for now and do know that this is forming a closure so no matter how many times i call on of fn each of these on of fn functions will always have a reference to this current index variable all right and it will have the reference to the latest value of the current index variable because for each of these function calls this function treats current index as its own global value so it forms a closure with it and therefore no matter how many times we invoke this on of fn it will always have a reference to current index because current index is in this inner function scope 
So the parent function of this inner function was this function, which allows it to form a closure with this cycle function, and it allows it to retain all the values in its parent function. So that's why this inner function can retain all the values of the cycle function, and it will always retain the latest values. Remember that because this is nothing but a global variable for this function now. All right. Now with whatever we have written as of now, this is again always going to return on because current index is still zero, right? We are not modifying this. So now let's say that the next time this is called. We want to return off, right? We want to increment the current index for the second call. So we know that the next step is to increment current index. So let's say I just copy this current index, place it here, and I increment it. All right. If I just do this much, this should almost work. But just notice one thing: because we're already incrementing it here, so the first time when I call on of fn, since our index was already zero, when I call on of fn, it's going to invoke this. So zero plus plus will become one. And it will return values of one, which is off. So for the first function call, it will return off. That's not right. It should return on for the first function call. So to fix that, we can simply initialize this as minus one instead, right? So the first time on of fn is called, minus one will become plus plus. It will become zero, and values of zero will be returned, which is on. Then the second time on of fn is called, we know that current index was already zero because of the previous call. So current index. Which is zero will become plus plus. It will become one, and then values of one will be returned, which is nothing but off. All right. So this part works fine. But now the problem is when it's invoked again. You remember our current index had become one, right after this call. But when this is invoked again, based on our code as of now, current index will again become plus plus. So the current index one will become nothing but two, and it will return values of two. But values of two is undefined because the values array or the number of arguments passed is only two. So index-wise, it will be zero one. But when this current index becomes plus plus and it goes from one to two, values of two will return undefined because we don't have three values in the values array, right? We just have two values. So values of two will become undefined. So here we need to simply add a check where if the current index exceeds the length of this values array. Then in that case, we need to cycle back. So we need to change the current index back to zero, right? It's pretty obvious. So don't worry, I'll dry run this to you. But first, let me write the condition. All I can do is I can write if current index, let's say if current index becomes greater than or equal to values dot length minus one. Then in that case, we want to make sure current index becomes zero, and otherwise, current index needs to Keep on incrementing. All right. So over here, I have written current index greater than equal to values dot length minus one. So if it becomes greater than equal to values dot length minus one, we need to cycle back and change the current index to zero. Otherwise, we keep incrementing it, and then we return the value of that particular argument. So why have I written values dot length minus one? Well, that's because we are starting from the current index minus one, right? So over here, let's say for this example, we have on and off, right? The two arguments. So the values array is going to have two values. So in this case, we know the values dot length is going to be nothing but two. So just to dry run this, when on of fn is called for the first time, so we know this function over here is going to be invoked. So when on of fn is called for the first time, it will check if current index, which is minus one, is greater than equal to values dot length minus one, and values dot length minus one is nothing but two minus one, that is one. All right. So the first time on of fn is called. Current index, which is minus one, is it greater than equal to one? No, it's not. So it's going to go to else. And then minus one plus plus will become nothing but zero. So this will be nothing but current index. Let's just write it over here. Current index. All right. So current index will be zero. Then we'll return values of current index, which will print nothing but on. All right. So this is completed. All right. Then after this, we go to the second function call, which is on of fn, and this will again invoke this function over here. Then again, we'll check current index, which had become zero after the previous function call. So is zero greater than equal to values dot length minus one? Nope, it's not. So it's going to go to the else, and it's going to get incremented. So this will become one, and then it's going to return values of current index, which is values of one. That is nothing but off. All right. So this will also be done. Then we go to the third invocation, and again this function will be called. And this time we know current index was one after the previous function call. So is one greater than equal to values dot length minus one? Yup, one is equal to values dot length minus one. So this means we will make current index back to zero. So this will become nothing but zero, and we will return values of current index, which is values of zero, and that is nothing but on. 
all right so this function invocation will also be done all right now do you get why did values dot length minus one because we are starting from the current index minus one itself right so we don't need to do only values dot length because if we do that then it's not going to iterate through properly all right and for one case it's going to return undefined so if this was just values dot length it would be nothing but two and let's say here if we did not have minus one and if it was just values dot length so let's say if we had just written current index greater than equal to values dot length and after current index had become one for the next function call this current index would say nothing but is one greater than equal to two if minus one was not there so is one greater than equal to two it would be like nope so it would go over here and it would make current index plus plus so this one would become two and then it would try to return values of two and values of two would be undefined right so that's why we put minus one over here because we're starting from minus one so we can also take this one step back all right so now just to actually check if this works or not what i'll do is let me first click on run all right so you can see all our test cases did run properly and i'll just erase everything i've written over here on the board all right so i've erased everything and you can see our test cases have passed now let me just try to submit this so if i click on submit and there you go you can see all our test cases passed all right all our five test cases have passed and we have the completed marked automatically over here so this means our logic here worked perfectly fine so although this was an easy level question it does test your knowledge of closures and whether or not you know how closure works behind the scenes and that you can store variables in the outer scope and carry them towards the inner function scope and keep them as a reference and so on so yeah that's all for this question and if you found this video insightful don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more